Hi, everybody. Welcome back to, uh, I think we're on stage three of the Diana Initiative. We're super excited to have you here today. Um, up next, we have Rebecca Hoffart, and she's going to be talking to us about inspiring girls um, to find pathways to the cybersecurity pipeline. We're super excited to have her here with us. As her talk goes on, feel free to post questions up in the comments and we'll be sure to get to them if we have a time. So I think without much further ado, this is Rebecca Hoffart, computer science teacher from the US Virgin Islands. We're super excited to have her with us. Rebecca, take it away. Awesome, thank you so much, Meg. I am so excited to be here. This is my favorite organization and I'm ridiculously proud to be involved in this today. This is gonna be a little different kind of presentation. I'm not the technical wizard in cybersecurity, but I do really feel that we just can't have this next generation fight as hard as all of you all did to get into this pathway. And I know that when we reach out and help others, it builds our self-esteem and helps us make makes us feel good. So I'm hoping to give you some inspiration on ways you can reach out, give back, and boast your own self-esteem along with that. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and start to give you a little bit of the background and context for this talk. Bear with me. Okay. Meg, is everybody seeing the slides? I didn't lose everybody, did I? Hello? Nope, you're good. Oh, okay. Let's see if that'll stay up for me because I kind of did a stop sharing. All right, good. So uh, yes, my name is Rebecca Hoffert and I live and work in the US Virgin Islands. I'm going to give you a bit of context about uh, what I do after I explain why I'm here and why you are here. I checked the Diana Initiative's website and I found oh, a free- I'm sorry, Rebecca. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, we were almost flawless going through this, but I think that was my fault. Um, can you reshare, please? Sure, no, I believe that was me because I thought for a minute you guys could not hear me. No, I think that's my bad. Let's see here. Okay, I'll try to be more patient this time. Can you hear me still and see the slides? Meg, yes, you're good to go. Great. So I'm Rebecca Hoffert, and I am here to talk about being an inspiration to the next generation. I found a phrase on the Diana Initiative website, which inspired me, and it really spoke to exactly what it is that I want to do. I don't think anyone would be here if they didn't support this statement. We want to elevate, inspire, and support all underrepresented genders, sexualities, races, and cultures in information security. I know the title of my presentation is specific to girls, but inclusivity is part of what I do. And I'm sure you all value inclusivity as well. Let me tell you uh, the environment that I live and work in. I am not originally from the island of St. Thomas, but I have lived there since the year 2000. It's the longest I've ever lived anywhere in my life. Um, we're in the Caribbean. I always tell people we're that little tiny pencil point to the right of Puerto Rico. So yeah, that's us right there to the right of Puerto Rico. We are a US territory under the US flag. And it is an incredibly, terribly beautiful place. Most people, uh, when they think of this concept of beautiful St. Thomas, think of something that looks rather like this. Of course, you've seen this meme and you know that the reality is, oh yeah, it actually does look just like that. That's a real picture. And if you go there, that's basically what it does look like. 
it's a fantastic place, um, but it's a very small place. We're a tiny rock in the middle of the ocean in between the Caribbean and the Atlantic, roughly 32 square miles. And it's about three miles north and south and 12 miles east and west. Um, those great views we get are because we're rather mountainous. And you may have heard on the news back in 2017, we got hit with twin category five hurricanes, Irma and Maria or anti or Maria as we call them. So we are very much still rebuilding from that. It has been slow, slow, slow. We have a population of roughly 50,000 on that 32 square mile rock, at least according to the 2010 census. We think it's pretty much the same, pretty stable in terms of overall numbers. It's interesting because pre-COVID, we would have cruise ships that would come in every day and the population of cruise ship visitors would outstrip that of our local population. We had almost 2 million every year on average. So more visitors than locals. Our population is diverse and always has been. The U.S. Virgin Islands has always been the crossroads of the Caribbean, even back in pirate times, highly diverse people from every corner of the world. But we roughly fall into about 75, 76% black, 15% white, the rest is very mixed, and about 17% of us identify as Hispanic. Despite our natural beauty, we have issues with poverty. A high percentage of our population on our island falls below the poverty line, especially in our younger people. People under 18, um, it's a 37% live in households below poverty. Almost all of those are households uh, headed by single moms. Because of the hurricane, students had half day schedules for most of that school year when the storms hit. And because of COVID, we've had school closures, we've had half schedules, we've had online school with our unreliable power and internet connections on our island uh, since March of 2020 when our school shut down. So the current graduating class of 2021 barely went to high school. They were home or doing whatever they were doing, not at school, a very high percentage of the time. So that is indeed a challenge that our graduating class faces. Uh, it's not all bad. We have rich cultural traditions. We have our St. Thomas Carnival. We have amazing things that go on in our schools, like this picture up here at the top right-ish is a student troupe from an elementary school. And that what they do is they go to various events and do bambula dance. And they talk about the history of the dance and they go all over the place. It's uh, incredibly enriching to be at some of our local events. We have fantastic food. Some of my favorites are the Johnny Cake and of course the Fracos. Don't go anywhere but Rudy's. It's the best. Fantastic music. And we honor our history. The 1892 commemoration that we do every year is a commemoration of coal strike workers who are striking for higher wages. So we do have a bit of a feisty spirit in the Virgin Islands. Uh, we're proud of that as well. We have a fantastic HBCU. The University of the Virgin Islands uh, has brought a lot of wonderful programs to us and it has enabled a lot of our young Virgin Islanders to get a college degree that otherwise they could never afford. We are rapidly approaching um, progress. In fact, this year, and I was traveling, I did not make it there, um, but this past July 10th, we had our first ever gay pride parade on the island of St. Thomas, and it was our own little version. Um, it was kicked off with speeches by the rabbi and the minister. That's our downtown area right there. Interestingly, uh, as our values are changing and moving forward, we are also changing in technology. If you go to submarinecablemap.com or one of the other similar sites, you'll find that our US Virgin Islands is the crux of one of the biggest just confluences of underwater internet cables on the planet. We just have far more than our share for a 32 square mile island. And we have had companies come to take advantages of our tax breaks programs that we offer. If we can ever find a way to really suck off that 
availability of bandwidth potential and get that out to our youth community, uh, we may be changing the world right in front of everything. COVID is also changing our population because um, it is possible to get decent, at least, internet connectivity on our island. Many people stateside uh, during COVID decided that they wanted to be close to that natural beauty and come down to us. And that has changed the, um, the figures on the diversity of our population. Most of those coming down to the island were white people. And we definitely noticed that um, there's a difference in who's around these last, this last year and a half. I am sure that in your communities, similar changes are happening. I wonder if Kate can maybe help us out because I for whatever reason, can't see your, your chat contributions right now. But if there are changes that are influencing your communities that you could share in the chat, that would be greatly appreciated. And I'm sure we would all be interesting in knowing what is going on. For us, it's changes in technology, changes in the diversity of the population, changes in the value system, and recovering from these two disasters, the hurricanes and also the COVID. And maybe, Kate, if we get some submissions there, we can just pop in and talk about those. As far as my personal and professional context, um, not so long ago, I was a school librarian. Uh, yes, a bit techie, but mostly helping kids enjoy reading. I love reading stories to children. And our HBCU, UVI, uh, was awarded a five-year over a million dollar grant to and build the K through 12 pipeline into cybersecurity. I got the benefit to attend a cyber camp back in 2014. Mostly it was students. There were a couple of us teachers and I just got very excited by the whole idea of introducing my students to the cybersecurity career path. I started coaching Cyber Patriot the next year. And I got the chance to be a leader as part of the 2015 cyber camp the following summer. Here you can see our campers in that 2015 cyber camp that's on the UVI campus here in St. Thomas. And they are they're just wonderful, wonderful bunch of kids there. They are ranging in age from entering sixth grade to uh, some graduating seniors. One of the students here, Matthew, he's over on the, the right of your screen by me. Um, he's graduated and you're gonna see him in some future pictures. In fact, a lot of these kids you will see in other pictures, but what you won't see is a predomination of female campers. You got mostly boys and five female campers in that picture. So I wasn't satisfied with that. And I got together with some people that I knew from my school and uh, worked with the partnerships that we had made through that grant program. We put together a little Cyber Saturdays program through the local YWCA. That turned out to be one of the best things that we ever did. The people who are in charge of the YWCA are open to uh, an incredibly inclusive program. You don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be a girl. <laughs> you don't have to be anything to be a part of the YWCA in St. Thomas. So we threw up a little website and we uh, were able to get access to a public computer center, which was hosted by uh, the St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. But really that initiative comes through the Virgin Islands Next Generation Network. They're a quasi public corporation that, um, through their economic receipts by selling bandwidth and through some grant money, they are able to kind of provide a middle mile in our um, local network infrastructure. So we had about 12 computers, maybe about eight of them could connect to the internet at any time, but we got a great group together and we even got some donor sponsorship. People started dropping by and donating new computers to us. It was a really exciting time and we just, it was a nice beginning to see what we could do. It was wonderful that we were able to bring together VINGN, the CCOR partnership out of University of the Virgin Islands, which brought in all the federal grant people, the Department of Energy, and a network of HBCUs, along with the YWCA and along with the church. Probably the most important, uh, we brought the church ladies. And these two women just organized everything. They, 
as far as being an instructor, my life was so easy because I didn't have to deal with any supervision and they always brought snacks. Uh, that was very different from my usual experience in the classroom. So for me, it was a way to learn that the more partnerships you can bring into your movements, uh, the better off it's going to be because everybody brings a little something to the table. It's like a potluck dinner. If you only have to bring the baked beans and that's all, um, makes your life so much easier. And it makes it a lot easier for more people to hop in and participate. Lesson learned. Uh, not only did they bring snacks, but they brought me a whole fair. They decided they wanted to organize uh, Girls in ICT Fair. So we partnered up with Girls in ICT, which is an organization that's now supported by the UN Women. And they organized a whole fair for the students at my school. And it was called Girls in ICT. But you can see there were boys in the picture, too. Everybody was invited. And we were able even to get a high school student from up in the United States to come in via video conference. This was before we were all doing video conference <laughs> instruction. So it was pretty exciting. My students just loved seeing her on the screen and she taught them how to um, make the fashion scene with scratch. Uh, we really had a fantastic time. So I never expected to get a whole Girls in ICT fair out of the Cyber Saturdays, but I can't honestly say that I did much. I brought my baked beans and uh, the rest of the whole spread was done by the ladies from YWCA. And coming around full cycle, our 2016 UVI Cyber Camp, if you want to look at this picture, um, shows eight female campers. So that's a pretty good ratio, I think in one year. Our numbers were starting to build. We were getting on the rise. Uh, this is my 2016 middle school Cyber Patriot team. My school, we would have to do a bake sale to pay the registration fee for the Cyber Patriot team competition. But if you have an all girls team, then Cyber Patriot waives your fee. So we put together an all girls team so we didn't have to do all the bake sales and instead we could practice our cyber security tactics. These are all middle school students and they are all uh, the first ever all girls team out of my former school. Um, out of that team of seven girls, uh, one of them is now entering 12th grade, and she's an NCWIT, National Center for Women in Information Technology, National Award winner in 2020. Uh, another one is just graduated. She's entering Gannon University this fall to study cybersecurity. One is now entering her sophomore year at our HBCU, University of the Virgin Islands, studying cybersecurity. One I know is going into a STEM career. I thought it was possibly marine science. I just found out yesterday that she tends to be a double major in biomedical and economics, and she wants to do um, genome studies for the Center for Disease Control. So <laughs> that's amazing. It is not, however, cybersecurity, but pretty cool. Uh, when we did Cyber Camp 2017, we had some more changes. We had more girls, but maybe even more important, we also were able to bring in two female instructors, uh, one of which I worked with at my institution, who, but who also had a university affiliation, and the other who was a student at U the University of the Virgin Islands. She graduated while we were in the midst of our, of our camp, I believe. But bringing in local women, I mean, I'm, I'm white and most of my students are not. And it really is true that the more they see someone who looks like them, the better they're going to be able to relate to you. And they also relate to young people. I wasn't 50 plus then, but I am now. So having some young women of color participate as instructors in the camp, I think it really made a difference for us. It was an excellent change to add um, to add to the program. It just showed that we were growing and we were bringing more people into it. Super exciting. That's when I decided that I wasn't happy with having UVI's camp and I wanted to have my own camp. So I actually worked with NCWIT, that's the National Center for Women in Information Technology, wrote a little grant and we put together a summer camp just for girls. NCWIT wants the girls to choose a topic uh, that they feel passionate about and focus their efforts on that topic. So um, we focused on a couple of different things, but you can see that my student there, Jessica, she worked on her tablet and she did a, an animation program related to 
global warming. We brought in some women of color from the community who were working professionally in computer science related fields. Uh, one was doing network wiring. Um, we had some coders and programmers. We had um, people working for the ISPs, oh, about four different um, different speakers. And yep, that's one of the YWCA ladies. She is a retired engineer. So she came and gave us a talk about cybersecurity and computer science related to engineering. And we just had a wonderful time. This is Donette over here. She and Michelle Ventura, they were both the two new instructors in our UVI Summer Cyber Camp. And they both wanted to help us out with our Code Like a Girl Camp. One of the best things that came out of this was a brand new partner, Kritika Iyer. She's out of Plano, Texas, Plano. And she was a national award winner from NCWIT. She wrote the grant with me and was with me all the way in organizing this grant and was able to come over to St. Thomas from Texas the year before she entered, the summer before she entered Stanford University. And she was one of our primary instructors in this camp as well. At the end of the camp, we were able to get one of the auditoriums at UVI. We put together a little forum. We were able to get a sponsorship through the c -Corp partnership at UVI to get everybody cute pink Code Like a Girl t-shirts. And we put together some of our guest speakers, some of our students, some of our instructors from the program. Uh, and we made a fantastic little panel group. We had a panel of students and we had a panel of our instructors. So we were able to invite the entire community out to join our forum and hear a little bit about what we had been doing. It was really exciting. Then uh, after that summer, that amazing summer of 17 with so many, so many wonderful progressions. We got hit by the hurricanes. Uh, these photos of our, our of my school's Hour of Code celebration. This is actually not in 2017. It was 2018 by the time we got around to doing Hour of Code because we just didn't really have any connectivity and, and often no power right after the storms. At my house, we were out of power for four months, um, but the schools, they did a little bit better job and got us connected a little bit faster. We still did have Hour of Code though, and we really did have a good time. That's when uh, one of our guest speakers from the Code Like a Girl camp um, convinced me that we should start a Girls Who Code club over there at UBI. So we did that. Um, that's a 2018 photo, but we actually started in the fall, just a couple of weeks after the storms hit. So the ladies that you see in the picture there were uh, part of the very first Girls Who Code club ever in the USVI. It's an amazing organization. Uh, definitely encourage you to get involved with them. And there are my uh, fall 2017 Cyber Patriot team members, they're thanking one of our sponsors who actually put together some t-shirts and snacks and jump drives for us. Corporate sponsorship is always helpful. And that uh, is a little bit on how I've been trying to spark a journey in my community. I was asking earlier about changes in your community and how you might be a part of that. Um, but that's a little bit of what I've been doing. I'm going to show you a little bit more and then we'll move on. Basically, I've tried to focus my efforts on what I have seen that works. And those are in four forks of the pathway. Competitions such as Cyber Patriot are great, of course. I probably don't need to tell anybody here yet that CTFs are very fun and motivating for students. Cyber Patriot is a great defensive competition. It's really exciting. Meg is actually a very successful Cyber Patriot coach. Um, and I've enjoyed working in that program for, for many years now. There are other CT CTFs out there that are geared to young people more and more and more all the time. So that's always something to check for on Google. Pico CTF is really good, P-I-C-O. Uh, SANS Institute, which you are probably familiar with as a provider of cybersecurity, continuing education, certificates, et cetera. They've done a great job with their Cyber Start competition. Uh, and I just anybody who is a young person or who is an educator of young people, if you can share with them that those competitions are out there, 
they make it so easy for somebody who is not a technical wizard, such as myself, to lead the students and get them involved. They really make it impossible to not do the competition because they give you so much support and help. The students get really excited. I would also say that hands-on practice in the photos, you saw some Raspberry Pi development, you saw some uh, Lego Pi that we were working with. The Legos are really fun to add to the Raspberry Pi experience, anything with robotics. And it doesn't always have to be electrified. You know, you can build robots with uh, soda straws if you want to and marshmallows. But anything that hands-on works well. Um, for the very youngest ones, I've always found that the tablets are fantastic. They're not so good yet with the mouse and the keyboard, but that doesn't mean that you can't bring cybersecurity programming down even to as young as three, uh, because with the tablet, you can make a lot of things possible. Increase that local pipeline. In my community, Virgin Islanders are very, very best and most proud when we include our local people. So although I'm I'm definitely a state senator, I've been there a while um, and that's appreciated, but it's really wonderful when you can develop your population in your own community that houses you and build them up and get them into your pipeline and get them mentoring. Uh, it, it just makes makes the impact that much more powerful. Finally, inclusion, and I've touched on that. Youngest people can be involved in these pathways. Three-year-olds can learn that keeping your iPad flat on the table instead of holding it in your lap is a form of physical security because then it doesn't fall on the floor if it's up on the table flat. Uh, things like, you know, how many windows does a house have and, you know, which house is easier for the bad guys to get into, the one with one window or the one with 17 windows all over the place. Uh, they can answer that question. It makes them really happy to know about that. And uh, boys, you know, whenever, and it has happened lots of times, whenever uh, someone who might not look like a girl shows up at one of my programs, that person is embraced with open arms. You know, we wouldn't ever turn anybody away for any reason. So just make sure everybody is welcome. And here are some photo examples of that. The children in these pictures range uh, from nursery school age, so three and four year olds, all the way up through uh, fifth, sixth grade elementary. And it absolutely is possible to get these guys involved. And they're very excited when they are um, showing them a little bit of scratch programming. We're working with some basic robotics using the cubelets that are building block robots. Pretty exciting. And you know, for these young ones, when they're running their first program, that can be a very big deal. And it's, um, boy, it makes everybody happy to see how excited how alive and how just full of joy they are when they run that first program. For the older ones, uh, it's always good to include them, yes, but start to give them a chance to lead those younger ones, just as the bigger ones like to have young people from the university instruct them. That's their favorite. For the very youngest ones in the elementary school, they love to have the big kids come and work with them. So after a few years of working with these programs, I had a core group of big kids who I knew I could rely on whenever we did a fair, an event, a Saturday or anything after school, they would um, be my team and they would be the ones uh, working with the younger kids. So it builds their self-esteem. Teenagers sometimes have a hard time with their self-esteem. One of the things that makes them feel good is doing something for others, and it makes them feel like uh, they've got ownership of this knowledge. They do know a thing or two, and teaching the younger ones makes them really happy, especially when they see that the younger ones are so, so happy as well. I want to point out in this photo that one of the young people from the earliest cyber camp photo showed Matthew. He was in senior, a senior in high school at the time. And here he is back again. Now he is a university student and now he's participating as one of the big kids team, helping out with these initiatives. And he does that all the time. So he used to be in the camp. Now he's leading these camp events.
That said, um, we don't want the older ones to just teach. They wouldn't like it if that was their only responsibility. They very much want to keep learning. So even the ones who are kind of in the big kids section now, they don't want to spend their entire time as junior instructor, instructors. No, they, they want to explore new stuff too. So we added high school cyber patriot teams to the middle school cyber patriot teams. We kept them involved doing hands-on sometimes. The big kids like to use the cubelets as you see on the right here and use the building block robots. So there's nothing wrong with doing that every now and then, letting them have some fun. Um, down at the bottom, they're using each other as a human piano to play notes and they can enjoy um, continuing their own learning. When they succeed, you have to celebrate. Sometimes for those big kids, it's just like for the little kids. It's still run your first program. I am introducing students who are unfamiliar with computer science and cybersecurity every semester, every year. And so it's always somebody's turn to run their first program, which isn't always in the Trinket Python, it's a lot of different platforms. But it's always fun when somebody runs their first program, Hello World, here I am, I've, I've arrived on the cybersecurity pathway. It can also be getting points in Cyber Patriot. Cyber Patriot is super motivating because whenever you get points for your team, it says, do, 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 do. My kids tell me that's a video game sound from some video game that I don't know. But they, they love it when, those, when that points alert comes on. Uh, sometimes it's celebrating that you even have a Cyber Patriot team in the middle of COVID. Even if you have to compete in mass, even if you have to compete from different houses, whew, that was difficult. Um, but you got to celebrate that. I had students who were in the SANS competition last year. I had a team go to the national championship. This year, I had a bunch of students who were semifinalists, and they, I had uh, one go all the way to the finals and become an official um, cyber scholar, got a scholarship. And then I had a student who, uh, just like Krithika Iyer in the Code Like a Girl camp, had won the NC Wit National Computer Science Award. Well, this young lady who was in the camp with Krithika uh, when she was in 10th grade, she got that very same award. So now she can actually be a partner and run her own camps. We're winding down on time. Are you winding down too? I am. Perfect. Uh, so so some suggested part. I could go all day, Meg. I told, I warned you about that. You did warn me. <laughs> Thank you so much. So great partners. I mean, the YWCA was great. Uh, some of the photos you've seen come from the women of AT&T locally who always sponsor event days. I've mentioned Girls Who Code and NC Wit. I'm a big fan of the Cyber Innovation Center. I'm going to show you a photo from one of their programs. That's me building my very first program. I hate that picture of myself, but I love what it demonstrates. Uh, that's the first time I ever built a robot and I was pretty, pretty proud. So we all know professional development has to keep going. So learn, mentor, when, you be a, when you're a mentor, it builds your self-esteem, builds your network, and it helps you to know what to look for in your own mentors. And without mentors, you wouldn't get moments like that. Inspire, uh, neither of these two young ladies ever thought they were gonna do anything with robotics, but given a little bit of a taste of it, they absolutely loved it. So find ways to inspire them and never ever give up. Even if there are storms, even if there's COVID, that's one of my Cyber Patriot students. Uh, we just can't have this fight be so hard. It's, it, sh it shouldn't have to be. And anything that we can do to make it easier is, is going to help all of us. So my four takeaways for you, learn, mentor, inspire, never give up, spark a journey. I love tips and suggestions. Please feel free to drop them in the chat. Would appreciate it. And there's brought us here. Those are the people who got all this for us. And we love our sponsors. Thank you so, <laughs> so much, good. Rebecca. Are you gonna be available to chat with on the Hopin platform? Yes. Okay. Awesome, because I know we're running down on time and I appreciate, especially this past year, we did um, one of our Cyber Patriot competitions outside in the snow. So, you know, <laughs> everybody had their struggles this year, I think. <laughs> oh my goodness, you are just amazing. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. That was so inspiring to hear you. And I know that up next we have um, 
passwords. So I know people are excited about that talk. We don't have a lot of time for Q&A, so I'm going to encourage people to reach out to you in the Hopin platform and hear more about it. Feel free to reach out to me too if you're looking for more about Cyber Patriot. There's a bunch of Cyber Patriot mentors I've discovered in almost everything I'm in today. People are like, oh, I'm a Cyber Patriot mentor too. So if you're interested in starting something, I'm sure that you'll find people within this network today that will be able to help you. So um, thank you so much. Please, please listen and take to heart Rebecca's words and, and do what you can to inspire our next generation. It's so, so important.